All right, so we'll call the meeting to order for Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. And this meeting is being recorded. All votes will be taken via roll call. And we have Joyce Chunglo, myself, David Phil, Jane Nevinsmith, John Muskevitz, and Amy Parsons here in attendance from the select board. And uh, first order of business is the consent agenda. We have warrants AP2148, AP2148S, PR2124. We have the approval of a new mileage reimbursement rate. We have the Hadley Police Department resignation of Casey Gilbert, uh, the appoint appointment of the Assistant Town Treasurer, Stacy Sullivan, Hadley Historical Commission appointment, Courtney Meyer, and PVTA assistance uh, agreement amendment. That'll be approving that. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, uh, second by Jane. And anybody want to pull anything? If not, Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Uh, abstain. Is, that's the part secretary for DPW also? That is correct. And she's uh, she's still on probation right now? Or? I don't believe that she was hired under a probationary period. Everybody's hired under a probationary period. I wasn't. You're special, Jennifer. Well, we all know that, and I'll have the minutes reflect it, but John, she needs to be appointed so that we can have her bonded so she can actually function as the assistant treasurer. She is on probation still in that period. Yeah. But she does still need to be approved to be bonded, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to answer what John was raising. That's true. She's within that period. Does that change your vote, John, or no? No, I, I, I would just want to make sure that was the one that was for the DPW. So I'm abstaining on a DPW half of her. Okay. okay. So you're not abstaining at all? No, I am abstaining. Okay. And Parsons? <laughs> yes. Thank you. All right. We're off to a good start here. <laughs> Uh, next is uh, public comments. Please, uh, we're going to limit this to 15 minutes. Please limit your comments to three minutes or less so that other people may speak. If you're here for public comments, if you could uh, turn on your camera, wave at us, let us know that you're here for public comments. There's one thing I'd like to say, um, and it may not be the appropriate time, but in light of the new information coming out about mosquito spraying and because of the board's erroneous interpretation of our uh, vote, the 200, 2018 town meeting, I'd like to have the board reconsider our position and have a public hearing at our next agenda. We already passed the opt-out date for this year for the state, so. The, uh, I understand that, but I think we could still listen to our residents and send a letter to the state saying, we understand we missed the date, but we would like you to reconsider our position. So, it's going on the fall ballot though, isn't it? But we're, the, we're talking about it at town meeting in the fall is what I suggested. Right. But because of all the new information that's coming out right now, I'd like to uh, make a policy state uh, like board statement about it sooner. But if we opted out, then we're not actually in the program then. Is that correct? Is that how that goes? We, we can't opt out at this point. We're past the deadline, which was May 28th, I believe it was. Uh, in order uh -huh. to opt out and send us submitted a, a, a plan to be approved by the state. So we're past that deadline. So this is something we need to take up in the fall. And uh, I understand people didn't like the decisions, but you know, the deadline's the deadline, so. So we will take reconsideration in the fall at town meeting. Yep, that's what we approved last meeting. Okay, one of the other things I would like to consider is um, had, and it may not be again at this meet, not obviously at this meeting, but um, some of the towns are having um, tire recollection dates. There's a fee to take your tires, but 
tires with water in them are one of the most uh, prevalent places of mosquito breeding. So getting rid of tires in town would help us. The Mothers Club just got rid of 18 automotive tires and one tractor tire at their cleanup day. So. <clears throat> Is there, uh, John, I, do, were you the person that took those tires to be recycled or? Yes, I did. I bring them over to Duffy Tire in Northampton and they go to Rhode Island to get uh, re, reground into different things. How much does Duffy charge you for a tire? Can't give you my price. So, so we could do a collection or yeah. we, could do, we could do something like that? Yeah, we can make arrangements. I mean, I, I've dealt with him over the years since the Mother's Club started. And yeah. he, he takes care of the Mother's Club real well. So, Okay. So is there a cost, though, John, to yes. send a tire? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we just right. have to figure out pass it. that on to people turning them in. But nonetheless, I, it I believe I believe he, for... Anybody that walks in the door, I believe it's five dollars for an automotive tire, and fifteen dollars for a bigger tire, like a tractor tire or something like that. I know Leverett was able to do it for two fifty a tire, so we can find out where they were going with theirs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure if you check around, maybe there's someone else that that's doing it at, at a different cost. But you know what? What he charges me is what what they uh, what they charge him. So. Anyway, can we put that on the agenda for next time? And I would be happy to do some research on it. Well, it would be a matter of collection, a trailer, and everything else that would go with it. Um, I wonder if uh, it's a possibility to tap into our recycling people that are down um, on Cemetery Road there to see if they would do anything with tires and recycling those. Um, I wonder if we could ask them about that. I will check that in yeah. my research. Yeah, after the meeting, Jen, give me a call. I'll talk to you a bit okay. about it. Right. Okay. I can't actually, John, I can't call you tonight. I'm away and I have terrible phone service. Oh, I'll, call okay. you tomorrow. Oh. I'll call you tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, next. Anybody else for public comment? Um, I would just like to, I, I came in at the, when you were talking about, I know we've passed the date for the spraying, um, but one concern I have is for all the organic farms in Hadley, if they do aerial spraying, we have the potential to negate their organic certification if it's aerial spraying. So if we do have any ability to, um, revisit that prior to the state spraying prior to the fall, because usually they will spray um, as soon as we have some type of a finding. Uh, all up, uh, all up. Uh, yep. John Waskevitz. Yes, yep. There, there's a total misconception over this spraying deal. We haven't sprayed since since we started this program and even before we have not sprayed we this is a last ditch effort if we ever need it we're going to do everything in the program if we do have a problem with triple e this is not the first thing that we're going to do is spray with an airplane it, it's we, it'll probably never happen in hadley because most of the pesticides herbicides and insecticides that are sprayed by local farmers that do still spray, usually carries in the air for up to an hour or so. And we've never had a problem in Hadley with Triple E. So, I, you know, everybody's blowing this thing out of proportion for no reason at all, because they, they don't look at both sides of the conversation and they don't have all the facts together. This is a, a highly um, regulated, uh, spring program that DEP has. Well, uh, they, uh, everyone does have the ability, the farmers, the organic farmers, they have the ability to opt out their land from the program. So that way, uh, if it did get to the point where the state decided to 
spray, uh, there those lands would not be sprayed. So there, there is a, a method for people to opt their lands out. And I believe it even goes down to uh, individual landowners if they really wanted, you know, homeowners, if they really wanted to. Right. And well, I guess my concern is if it's aerial spraying, an airplane can't stop where it's spraying. It, so if it, a farm opts out, they have no, to it, stop. They actually can. Wind. They're very computer GPS controlled. They're very, very precise. And uh many parts of the country that they actually do aerial application for all pesticides and all spraying of crops. I mean, they, they're down to the foot as far as the application. I don't know if right NASA is going to do that. But. Right. We, right now, we don't have that on the drinking water supplies they have out on the East Coast around the, uh, the tidal waters, they have a 500 foot buffer around the above ground water supplies that they, that they have tested before, during, and after. Mm -hmm. And I have to agree with David, even though I have opted to bring this back to town meeting because I do want um, the citizens to chime in on it, but he should know being an aviation person exactly what an airplane can do. So um, I trust what he's saying about the exact mm -hmm. amount that they spray. But again, you know, we're in an area right now where we haven't had to use it um, let's hope that we don't have to, but again, they're pretty precise as David says on, uh, how they can spray. So we'll go forward. We'll bring this back in the fall and, uh, we'll see what we need to do and we can get information. Anybody that can contact town hall, um, about this, uh, aerial spraying, they'll find out that they can, um, send in a request. They'll, we always are notified ahead of time when there would be any aerial spraying and we can uh, get that information to the state that's doing the spraying. So um, mm -hmm. hopefully we can help them cover themselves. Right. I mean, my, my concern was just for the amount, I mean, Hadley prides itself in farmland and we have a significant amount of organic farms in Hadley. And the concern is with the, you know, I'm not against farmers using chemicals on their farms. It's just that with the farms where they're organic, um, you know, I've, I've had property spray and usually the farmers will, you know, notify us, close your windows because I'm spraying two blocks down mm -hmm. and they have to wait till a certain night to spray because you need the heavy air, but we can still smell it in the house. So that's my concern is and David, I'm not discounting anybody's ability in an airplane, but when they're spraying, when it gets down closer to the ground, you have wind currents in that, that change. Um, yeah. But each sprayer, um, my son sprays his crops. He's a, he grows 65 acres of corn every year. Uh, he needs to go and take classes. He goes and gets his license every year, renewed. So um, they are brought up to date every, every year. Ability. Yeah, it, every year they're brought up to date. Yep. yep. So they're kept abreast. I'm not. I'm not doubting anyone's ability. I'm. My concern is the drift to, of the Once you they, release it, they have to report what they use to DEP. Also, right mm -hmm. from the manufacturer. If you don't have a license, you can't buy the product. Correct. Right. I am not disputing any of that. What I'm saying is, once you release the product. It's up to nature where it eventually ends. You can be the best spray in the world, but you get some good gusts of wind, it's going to carry it. That's, that's all I'm saying. And I understand it was something that we have opted, we have not opted out of. Um, I just would like that um, people are aware, you know, the farmers are made aware if it gets to the point where we do need to spray if that happens that the farmers have enough time so that they have the ability to opt out or have their land opted out so i would say they should they should opt out now they, they if you are, are an organic farmer or if you have organic anything uh, you should opt out now through the state process don't wait because who knows how long the state takes to do what they do um, but we are or will be notified if it comes down to spring and we will certainly put it out there via Nixle, via the email blast and via every other possible way.
but but definitely opt out now if you have a concern. So I agree with so our Dave. Ag commission should, our ag commission should be contacting farmers to let them know, right? Our agriculture commission? Is that what you say, Paulette? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's another good way. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, last uh, last call for public comments. No. Okay. Uh, let's go to. Well, we have a hearing at six fifteen. Yeah, T Tommy and Paulette are here for this, I believe. Uh, Forty seven Bay Road, and the letter is in board docs. But uh, Tommy, that you brought this to us, so do you want to introduce? Uh, what's being proposed and your thoughts? Sure, sure. The homeowner, the uh, property owner was not able to sell it. It's been on the market for quite a while and um, there's gonna yeah, be- Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, a little concern, you know, with literally almost giving it away to the to potential buyers that, um, you know, walked away from it. So when I did have a meeting to see what we could do, um, you know, get it boarded up and, and at least the uh, safety wise, they proposed offering it to the town. And of course they would get the, the write off of what the, you know, taxes in that of the, um, the sale of it on their taxes. So they have written a letter and are proposing it. Um, uh, we went out today, Paulette and I, and, and uh, did a site visit. And um, it's, I'll let her explain as far as the conservation goes. Um, I have spoken with um, Chief Spank and Abel and it, there is the possibility of the fire department using it with the state's approval for um, test fires in that uh, disadvantage would be we, the town would have to dispose of it, what was left of the, you know, the house itself. And uh, so people that are watching, what are we talking about for land area, house area, do you have any, any idea? The right now the assessed value is uh, 177,000. Um, I can't believe that. Nine, I cannot believe that. They, she never realized she could have abated it. Um, and so she's been paying on that, the land at 179 and the building at 58.8. Oh and, my um, God. Yes. And the, it's 0.69, almost three quarters, of, between half and three quarters of an acre. What was it on the market for, Tommy? Free. I think five to 15,000 is the last few offers that she was willing to accept. But when they researched that, you know, they, they weren't going to be able to do anything with it. Um, you know, they walked away. In the floodplain area, that that water comes up to the right to the back of that house. Uh, whether they sit on three quarters of an acre or not, that is, I, I can't imagine uh, any usable land with that property. And I question whether or not the town really wants to get into if there's any asbestos in there we would be responsible for that. It was built in 1970, if I recollect, correct? Or 19, yeah, 1970? Um, 50. But why would we want 1950? Yep, on the, on the card it says 1950. Okay, so you can imagine what's in there for furnace or anything else, it's, mm -hmm. or is it electric? It's electric heat. We, we could not have acted. They did board it right up, so we have not been inside. We just did a you know the the property we walked which was cleaned up considerably but there there is still you know quite a bit out back yeah it is electric heat the property cards on board docks yeah i did see that electric heat water uh one bedroom as uh tile of some sort in there wondered if it's uh got stuff in the tile uh Paulette, what from the conservation perspective, what do you, what did you see? What's involved? Well, um, there, there's an area. I mean, obviously, around the house, there's an area of upland there. Um, if someone, you know, took the house down and wanted to rebuild or wanted to push it back, um, it would be very hard for them to build because there's a, a steep slope there or enough of a slope. There is a um, channel that goes right behind the house. And that's the area I believe that Joyce was referring to mm -hmm. when that area floods. So it is, it is floodplain. Um, there is quite a bit of debris in the back. 
I mean, if the town is looking at acquiring land, you know, for potential for floodplain um, in the future for dikes, um, you know, this is one piece. There's a couple of pieces beside those. Um, this piece that is along Bay Road that does not have any housing on it. Um, I have an older aerial that I'm looking at as I'm trying to describe. It looks as if um, there's a shed off the side of the house. Um, there's another like foundation um, behind it. And there is, I mean, it, it would have to be cleaned up. There's a lot of debris on the, on the site. Um, not as much as I thought I was going to see based on the history of the property. My understanding it was they used it um, like for metal. They took uh, air conditioners, refrigerators, things like that, and took them apart and reclaimed the, the metal. Um, we didn't see uh, a large amount of that around. So from that perspective, it got cleaned up. Did but, you share your screenshot for it? Uh, I think so. My question is to my select board members, why in God's name would we want to take ownership of this when it would cost us money to clean it up? Because it's an eyesore to the town and the owner can't do it. But that's okay, Jane. We don't have the money to do the cleanup and take care of it. I'm looking so at our budget right it. now. Right. You, you could look at it two ways. If the property's taxes aren't paid, um, it will revert to the town anyways and we'll end up owning it. No one's going to buy it. Um, if you look at the property here, this is it right here. Um, you can see this is, um, I believe this was like 1990, somewhere around there. This is when the aerials um, in there because it was the one that could show, show you the most. So you can see this is it. The, there's the house. This is actually um, a waterway or intermittent stream. This is the backwater that floods back here. So if we're looking at, and I don't know what exactly the town is looking at as far as um, that study to build a, potentially another dike um, protecting the town, if they'd be looking at doing things along here and allowing this area here to continue to flood, but to protect this upper area, you'd want, you'd end up acquiring land along this area. So, I mean, that's, that's just the thought if you're looking at it from that perspective. One parcel here um, for us, for conservation or for the town to own, because the majority of it is wet, I would say it's wet pretty much from this point down. <laughs> Oh, it goes right up. It goes right up in a flood back to the back of that house. When that fields in the back there flood, that house is right water right up to the back side of that. Okay. Well, this this stuff right here I think not, it, is not is not wetland vegetation, so it doesn't show. When no, we were but out it, there. Uh, I I have there. I have seen it over the years flood right up to the back of that house. Yeah, and I I don't doubt that. Um, nice. Yeah. I think in 1984, she said she had two or four inches of water in the first floor. And yeah. Pretty high. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why it's worth 150. It's waterfront. Yeah. So there waterfront you go. Property. You got the backside. Here. Backside. You got property. the waterfront on the back. Can we put yeah, it on I pond mean, too? Can we make a party boat out of it? Can we so do what with what it, it, John? Comes down to... Go ahead, John. No, what I, did you can we put pontoons on it and make a party boat out of it? <laughs> it it <laughs> yeah. Well, Paulette, was there some kind of fund that we talked about in our project meetings? I think at one point there was some pot of money from something for uh, cleaning up or rec reclaiming floodplain land. Um, I know there is money for um, all of the, um, for 
I'm not sure if it's cleaning up a floodplain, but I know there is funds now for replacing culverts, cleaning up um, areas around those areas to make them um, for climate change and things like that. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't say if there's something for or that particular. Um, I think Chief Spinkenable had mentioned, and I don't remember the exact fund or what it, what it was, but he was the one who had mentioned there is some type of fund that possibly could. It was a hazard mitigation of some sort. In yes, the, yeah. something like that. Yes, sir. So before the before the fire department uses it, does that mean it uh, everything has to be cleaned out of there before they can burn down the rest of the place? It would be hard to access everything in the back with the house there. Yeah, you just put it that way. Um, you'd have to really go in because there's a lot of knotweed in there um, surrounding the back of the house in that area. Um, minimally, just because we don't know what's under the veg the vegetation was about, you know, a foot and a half to two feet high already in mm. there. So you couldn't really see the ground. Um, I was saying to Tom, it would have been good to get in there in the fall or earlier this year to see what was there. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is a but, difficult decision to make to know if we want to take on another piece of property. I can't get rid of the ones I want to get rid of, for God's sakes. And now you got you want to give me another piece. <laughs> so I suggest that we do the research on what money might be available to help us with the cleanup of this property and postpone the vote until next meeting. That would be fine with me. I just, I just can't see right now the town undertaking another piece of property and having to clean it up and take care of it when we have other buildings right now that we're trying to uh, sell and do with. And, you know, there's just so much other things on the plate without another building um, to think about. If, if there is that hazard mitigation fund or something like that, where we could, uh, you know, clean it up using those funds that are not Hadley taxpayer funds and then uh, still have the benefit of uh, letting the fire department burn it down to practice, uh, you know, that might be a, a good situation. Uh, yeah. All, all the other properties we took for taxes, they had sold the property. So it was the next person that bought it's problem to clean it up. But. Yeah. I don't think this, this piece of property is resellable. Mm -hmm. Evidently it's been on the market for some time and it's just, it hasn't, moved even at the low price that it is and and you can certainly given why um you know so if you can do some research on monies that could be spent to take care of it without it being a cost to the town then i might agree to doing it yeah the just the proximity of the house to the road and mm -hmm. then how close the back area is to the wetlands and the intermittent stream behind there. Well, you cer you certainly wouldn't allow any backfill in there. No, I mean you no. wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to. You could you wouldn't be able you to. You could rebuild no. the footprint there, but they wouldn't have a yard. No, it would basically be the back of the house would be the that's, end of the that's road. on water and sewer too, Tommy, ain't it? Yes, I believe so. Yes. Okay. All right, so why don't we table it for now, Tommy, if you can look into those, what the funding sources are, and then we can bring it back next uh, next meeting and we'll make a decision based on what you guys find. All right. Sure. So, and if anybody has questions, she doesn't have access to internet. So I, I have her number if we need anything, but if anybody wants me to get a hold of her, just you know, let me know and I'll find out any answers from her. Okay. Yeah. Caroline, you don't know any programs or anything like that for vacant buildings? Uh, no, in the hazard mitigation, I suspect that's going to be for a municipal owned building. Uh, yeah. So even if that was available, you'd have to own that building before you could apply for those grants. But I, I can do a little uh, research. I, I, am, I have not heard anything even with my career in um, working in, with seniors, with houses and those situations that there was not there was not public money available to help out with things like that, but I will certainly take a look, see what mm -hmm. I can find. It's unfortunate because, you know, it's just been an eyesore for a number of years. Um, 
But anyway, we'll just move forward and see what we need to do. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Paulette. Appreciate the time. All right. Uh, we'll keep moving here. Let's go Nabala APR. And the select board is asked to sign the final documents for the Nabala APR at 136 East Street. The original request was passed at annual town meeting on in 2019, Articles 16 and 17. And so I think we're just signing these. Do we need to vote on signing them? There's kind of an odd situation there where they've asked for two separate checks, which is unusual, one to Peter and one to Robert. Mm. Um, normally, it would just go to the Nabala Farms um, because it's under the APR. So I'm not sure, is the APR Nabala Farms? Is it the APR Peter Nabala and Robert Nabala? Or is it one, is one farm? That's, well, that, would, that would be my question. Yeah, they, they had to put it in two separate names from, I, I had just talked to Robert and they had to put it in two separate names. Um, they still, Peter, I guess, is still going to keep the house and the APR land is going to be in both of their names. So I think that's why it's back here now because we had already voted on this quite a while ago. Yeah, we did. I think they were asking for two separate checks and that was yeah. the difference tonight. Yeah, that was the difference. That's, that's what it is tonight, yeah. Same amount of money. It shouldn't matter one or two checks. Does it, Linda? I think it does for them for tax purposes. No, but for us to issue one or two checks, is that a problem? Uh, the, issuing the checks isn't, isn't the, um, yeah, sure. We can, I can, we can write checks, but in order to issue checks, they have to be requested under a certain authority. And I'm just thinking about, you know, it has to match the app. It has to match something. The accountant's going to pay. You, you, you can't apply for money to be paid to one party and then just flip it and pay it to someone else. But there needs to be a, tra a paper trail, an authoritative there, paper trail. There, there, there is a paper trail from the MBAR, from the Commonwealth. They submitted it and Linda, I did the due diligence that you asked for. Oh, yeah. Okay. I had them submit the paperwork there with the letter. That is how the state is doing it. And the state has approved it. And they said, as long as... The state approves it that the town can approve it that way. And it's just a tax right. for the two for the two gentlemen. That's all it is. Okay. And that's that was the link I was missing, Jennifer, because when we talked, I, I, I think you're right. I asked, oh, well, how's the state doing it? Because if it's okay with them, then it will be okay with us. So well, that's I don't what think I, it's an issue. That's what I was thinking also, Linda, that there had to be, it had to match from the original. Mm -hmm. But if the state's uh, if the state's good with it, then um, I don't see why we would make it our own issue. If you want, no. Linda, if you want a copy of that, Jennifer, can you send her over a copy of it? Of everything? Everybody has a copy of it. It's on board docs. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I, didn't I see saw it. Sorry. All right. So if I can get a motion to approve this, I move. Second. Right, Joy <laughs> second by Amy, I think that was. And uh, any further discussion on this? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Next is uh, 6.2 Open Meeting Law Complaint. And uh, the select board as a whole got an open meeting law complaint on, let's see, what date was this? But it was the date of alleged violation was uh, May 12th, 2021. And uh, what was alleged is that the uh, posted agenda was not sufficiently specific to reasonably inform the public of the issues to be discussed at the meeting as is required by the open meeting law specifically item 6.2, so there was going to be a, a COVID-19 update, but the select board actually discussed, voted, and implemented on a chain to change to a town public health policy. This caught many by surprise and created considerable confusion. Um, the suggested- Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, the suggested response is that um, repost the agenda with a description that adequately informs the public of the topic to be discussed and the action requested to avoid similar confusion in the future, consider instituting a first read, second read policy when changing town public policies. Um, Amy, go ahead. I was just gonna, did we actually change any policies? So 
this was the, the COVID uh, access policy to the buildings, basically saying that you don't have to be vaccinated or share that information. Um, was there but, something that said that we had to have vaccinations to go there before? No, this was if anything was a new policy. And so that is, uh, according to the open meeting laws, that it was sufficiently posted. Uh, tonight we have posted under 6.3 COVID-19 update, the Council on Aging and the Hadley Public Library will both present their opening procedures. Uh, we, we never uh, post, you know, super detail in the agenda. They're broad topics. People can click on them and find the information. Under that topic on the, when we discuss that vaccine policy, um, the policy was posted on board docs. So anybody that wanted to take a look at it could have. I'm sorry, it was only posted three hours before that meeting because I had read the docs the night before and then when I got to the meeting, it was there and I inquired and it's, they said it went on at three o'clock Wednesday afternoon. And per the open meeting law, they can post that uh, two minutes before a meeting starts and it's legal. So what I'm saying is it's not actually a violation of the open meeting law. Um, John, John may not have liked it, but it's still not a violation. Um, also, yeah, we, as far as the quite a bit in the past, just to get through some of these meetings, well, in less than 48 hours, if we had to bring anything up, you know, the chairman would bring it up and we would vote on it, yeah. you know, things along. So. And then the first read, second read policy. Uh, sorry, but that's, that's not a good fit for the town of Hadley. We are a part-time board. We meet uh, twice a month, sometimes three times a month. And uh, if you look at, uh, you know, not to put Amherst down, but if you look at the slow pace of things that are done in Amherst and Northampton with more full-time staff than we have, uh, we'd never get anything done at all. If we had to read something and wait two weeks for the next meeting in order to discuss it, uh, we post it in board docs. That's the way it's always been done and it, it meets the open meeting requirements. So I, I would not be in favor of that. But anybody else, what do you have? Comments? I don't have a problem the way that it's done um certainly as um this covid thing evolves uh we will be looking at changing again how we may alter uh things that will happen and opening up the uh senior center and the town hall and town buildings and um, as every other town is doing right now so we're not you know in any other ball we are doing what we feel was important at that time. Um, I did speak with an instructor that felt um, that when she did her classes, she did want to have people that were in it that were vaccinated. And I guess that would be at her purview um, to require that. And that's perfectly fine with which comes out of the senior center. Um, and if you want to join the class, then you would, you know, per the instructor, show your your COVID card or be registered or whatever you wanted to do. But if you're going into using it and, you know, everybody right now is on the honor system, no matter which way you look at it with the opening of stores and whatever, you don't need to wear your mask if you're uh, vaccinated. Um, if you're not vaccinated, you need to wear your mask. Well, who's going to ask these people if they are vaccinated or not is kind of like an honor system. So, you know, you're caught with a rock in between um, of how, how the openings and things are happening right now. If you're in a room of 10 people and all of a sudden you ask, all right, so everybody is vaccinated. Those that aren't, you know, we require you to wear a mask. Well, what that one person is going to put a mask on? I don't think it's anybody's business if they're not vaccinated. It's up to them to be honest and, and uh, go along with that. So I don't know. That's how I feel. How does everybody else feel? So just going back to the, to the open meeting complaint though, um, Carolyn and can correct me if I'm wrong, but this, it was posted per the law. Yes. And just because someone doesn't agree with a topic that's posted, doesn't make it illegal. Um, you know, we, we're pretty good about uh, only taking up items that are properly posted. We don't do a lot of unanticipated business, but um, I will make sure that we don't 
take up unanticipated business unless it really is items un, uh, unanticipated. And, um, you know, we'll you know, on that specific thing, I think we had to uh, look at two sides of a coin uh, of what was happening and what took place. And uh, I think that's what uh, promoted the, the, for you to make this uh, statement on how we were going to, you know, open it up. And I think, uh, are, are they going to have some other type of, uh, Thing to present tonight for the senior center is that on the agenda yep so okay. senior center and library and uh, okay. if if we were to follow this suggestion we couldn't talk about that tonight because it's not the the full plan is not posted in board docs under COVID 19 update do we have anything with town hall being uh, changed or anything about that tonight no i i'll up, i can update you on that either under covid under that category or when I do my town administrator report. Okay, thank that's you. The, that's the point David's trying to make. All right. we do is take it under advisement right now, we couldn't vote on it, which would just drag us on and on and on, you know, for a month. Yeah. yeah. And we've been doing the best we can throughout this whole pandemic. And I'm sure we're gonna have some big changes, as you said, Joyce, uh, going back to normal here, you know? Yeah. It's it's not going to happen overnight. You know, no, people, because... that, people that I spoke with that have been vaccinated still will still want to wear masks. Some of them. Yeah. You no, know, you, you just don't know. It's going to be a pers personal preference, actually, is what it is now. Yeah. We're off topic. We're supposed to be talking about the um, issue of the open meeting law violation. It was filed against us, not what oh. our... COVID policy is. They're two different things. It's all part of that complaint. And, and we are we are going to get to COVID as the next agenda item. So um, anyways, it, it would be my inclination to respond to say that we follow the open open meeting laws. And uh, I, I would not be in favor of a first read, second read policy, because uh, that would mean, for example, that the library would have to wait an additional two weeks before they could open if we were to follow that that uh, policy and it would just slow everything down even even further than it already is it's not required by law and it's not something that fits a small town with a part-time staff i guess we would have to say that if um, a person feels that we uh have violated an open meeting law that then they need to file the proper things to ethics uh, and go forward with that but as a board with you know guidance from our administrator and our legal that we have not violated the open law meeting then i don't see for us to um go further anymore with this discussion that's a motion can i ask for a clarification about open meeting law mm -hmm. so as i understand it from this conversation it's legal what is your name what's I'm your Haley. name my name oh, is Haley. Haley. oh christ i got Haley my glasses director. Thank yeah you. okay Haley. Um, thank you so do i understand correctly that it is not a violation to submit a significant policy um, hours before the select board meeting? That's, that's correct. As long as it's posted, the policy does not have to be posted. Uh, just like any policy that the, pulp, the select board makes, there's no requirement that it needs to be given to town employees. The select board sets policy. That's the purview of the select board. And that needs to be understood uh, clearly. <laughs> um, whether or not you agree with the policy, it's still under the purview of the select board. If it's properly posted, that the, the decision can be made. Okay, so I, I had not, I, I didn't know that it had been, I, I would not have thought it was properly posted, it having been only hours ahead of the meeting, but now I do understand that. So thanks for the clarification. All right, uh, motion by Joyce, did we have a second? Second. Second. Second by John. And any further discussion on this? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Devin Smith? Same. Chunglu? Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you.
Okay, moving on, we have 6.3 COVID-19 update. So let's start with the library. I think it's, or is Patrick here? I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, you're a little quiet, but I can. Uh, I'll shout. All right, go ahead. So, yeah, I mean, I'm here. I, I really came more to collect information because I didn't really know what was going on with the recent changes. Um, I had reached out to the Board of Health previously and I didn't hear back from them. So I'm, I mean, what we're planning to do at this point after discussions with staff, discussions with trustees, is to, um, to drop the appointment system and just go back to being open six days a week, our normal hours, uh, people just walk in for service. Um, you know, we are a little concerned about um, the issue with this being, you know, a facility that serves all age groups. So we do have, you know, young people using the library that are not eligible for vaccinations. And so that is concerning. Um, so we, you know, we do hope that people follow that, you know, honor system as, as Joyce uh, called it and, you know, make good judgments, wear masks if they have not been vaccinated um, and, you know, continue to act safely, as safely as they can. Uh, but we're, you know, we're ready to go. We're ready to reopen and have people coming in just when it suits them. So would you classify that as a masks optional? If you want to wear one, wear one. Uh, even if you are vaccinated, um, if it makes you comfortable. Well, certainly. I mean, we welcome people to wear masks if they if they feel more comfortable, whether they're vaccinated or not. We're not going to be asking right. people, obviously, and it's not right. it's not really up to us. Although, you know, we do have a preference because we want people to be safe. Okay. But you're basically ready to open six days a week, like it was pre-COVID. Correct. Sounds sounds like a plan to me. Everything else is opening back up, back to normal. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm after wearing a mask for a year, it, it's not much to continue to wear the mask until we're a little further out in this thing. But, you know, whatever the board votes. I, I think we can open. And again, uh, if the, people do not feel comfortable, and this is the rule of thumb, if they don't feel comfortable going into a building without a mask on, then they don't have to. If they feel like they can and they've been vaccinated and they feel comfortable doing that, then they ought to have the option to do that. And I, I am in favor of that. And I, I really hope that people will do an honor system thing and not just brush it off and say, that doesn't fit me. I didn't believe in it anyway. But please take this seriously. This is, you know, part of your community and uh, have respect for those that do or those that don't. Um, you know, and I, I'm in favor of opening up um, as best that we can. Um, there's no limitation now in bars or restaurants or anything else. And I think, you know, it's I think it's a good thing that we're now able to open up the library. So I'm in favor of that. So can I move that we continue to follow state guidelines for reopening the town? Sounds good, Amy. Motion? Yeah. Is that your motion? Yes. Yes, I'll second that. All right, motion by Amy that we uh, follow state guidelines and second by Joyce. And so that would mean the library could go back to normal operations, basically. Does uh -huh. that force the, the town hall to open? sooner than they're anticipating? We're already open. Full time? Mm -hmm. Okay. So David, if I can just, I'm, I'm sorry, I know you've made the motion, but um, I feel like I need to live a little bit more information uh, coming to this point um, as the governor um, will be rescinding the state of emergency in, uh, next week, June 12th. I felt um, that I, it was important to meet with Haley and Patrick to just see how they were feeling. They had a, what Patrick just shared about uh, younger, younger children won't be uh, vaccinated as well as um, for the senior center, a vulnerable population. I, and we just spent time together talking about um, what the concerns were. Um, and Haley will certainly uh, present to you what her plan is. Um, and, and I think Patrick came up with a really good um way to welcome people when they came into the building once they opened. Um, and I think Patrick, you used the term to be able to put up a sign um, that said, um, 
The Hadley Public Library welcomes mask wearing for the benefit of young children and others who have not been able to receive vaccinations. And I, and I felt that that was, this is, you know, I just wanted to make sure you understood that I think there would be, uh, I think Patrick would, if I'm speaking for you, Patrick, butt in, but I think uh, Patrick would feel most comfortable to be able to put something like that on the door. And I just wanted to give kind of, uh, make you aware of that. And then of course, Haley's gonna talk about um, what her and her board has uh, uh, decided to present. I, th I think that's whatever the library feels is comfortable. I think that's, that's perfect. Okay. So I don't know if you want to do a, a just a per building or you want to wait until Haley speaks and then I can share with you what's been going on at the town hall. Well, let's do per building. Um, we've already done library. Let's go with that and then we can move on to the next one. Yeah. We All have right. a motion on the floor. Yep. So motion by Amy, second by Joyce to have the library just follow the state guidelines as far as uh, reopening. So the motion was for the town to continue to follow state guidelines. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So are we sorry. Do by building sorry. Or? No, you're fine. So I'm moving that the library will open and continue to follow state guidelines. Okay. I'll second, second that also. All right. John, what was that? State and CDC guidelines. Correct. Yes. State and CDC guidelines. All right. Uh, different though. Um, how different? I mean, maybe stick with the state since that, you know, every state's different and. Yeah, that's actually probably best. So I am moving that we open the library and follow state guidelines only. I'll go with that too. <laughs> Did you get hey, any motions, first, Jennifer? First motion ever. Nope. So. <laughs> <laughs> Three times and you're out. We're good, Amy. We're good. You used up all your motions tonight. <laughs> I'm have trouble getting back into the swing of things. <laughs> all right, uh, Jennifer. We'll call it Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungaloo. Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Patrick. And I'm looking forward to seeing the new library at some point. You're welcome. Can't wait to see you here. Me too. All right. So uh, Haley, let's go with the senior center next. What are your thoughts? Um, hi. Uh, we are going to continue very much along the same lines as um, ha consistent with how we reopened in March. Um, the biggest change is that we no longer require mask wearing and very similar to, to Patrick's um, wording and sentiment, we um, certainly welcome mask wearing for any reason whatsoever, no questions asked, um, but it's, it's not a requirement. and. Um, we do hope that non-vaccinated people continue to take this, you know, to um, follow the state advisory to mask up, but that is based on trust. Um, one limitation that we would like to continue to impose is Mac is number limits per class that ha that classes that happen in rooms. Um, the EOEA, Executive Office of Elder Affairs, and the Massachusetts Council on Aging came up with some reopening guidance at the end of April that um, recommended a one person per 100 pair, uh, square foot uh, maximum attendance um, for certain kind, for, for all activities and buildings. Um, so we would just like to basically follow our square footage and limit class participation um, to fairly small numbers corresponding to that recommendation. Um, so that is sort of the, the, the last bit of um, policy-based caution that we would be exercising. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Haley. I run a class on uh, Tuesday night for joint replacements and um, we have, we're only allowed to have four uh, patients with their partners or whoever is going to be with them after their surgery and myself. So we're still limiting to nine to 10 at the max 
that can be in, in the room um, where I hold the class. So um, they can also be unmasked because we separate them six feet apart. And um, that's what we do, but that's, that's partners and mass general um, holding the, those guidelines right now still. Um, so, you know, every place needs to have what in place that they feel is comfortable. I think what you have put out there is, is, um, a safe uh, thing for our seniors. And I hope that that follows. I, I approve of that. Thank you. I would say what, that. What about your other classes for exercise and things like that, Haley? Um, see if I can remember the numbers off the top of my head. Um, I think we're limiting um, exercise class attendance to um, not um, six participants and two instructors. Um, we permit one person in our small fitness room, which is a gym with equipment, two people from the same household, um, six people in our art room for art classes and 16 people right now in the dining room. So again, it all sort of corresponds to that square footage um, guideline that was that was prepared for senior centers that seemed like a reasonable way to continue to kind of keep the brakes on full participation while we continue to keep our eye on the numbers and vaccination rates and COVID mm -hmm. rates, but with the, the strong hope that we fully reopen with, without any such restrictions by the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. So everybody is good with, as you say, putting everybody on an honor system. Uh, if they haven't been vaccinated, then they need to wear a mask. And if they aren't, then they can uh, be in the class without their mask on. Is that how you're going to go? Yeah, exactly. Our, our staff okay. and our board are comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, you've got my motion to accept that policy. And, um, yeah, and I think. Are you going to be asking for visual of their card? No. Their card? That's, no. that's obviously not the policy anymore. I have no problem with just giving you the, you or uh, the instructors the ability to change their capacity, you know, their discretion. If for right now, if it's 100 square feet or whatever it is, then that's fine. And if that changes in the future, I, I have no policy with allowing you to to change that as we go rather than have to come back to the board. I mean, uh, that's something, Great. That, you know. Okay. That yeah, works I'll go with that. I'll go with that also. Sounds good. Did I have a second for Joyce's motion? Second. Okay. Oh, um, first, second. second what are we motion. <laughs> made the motion. <laughs> All right. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Uh, uh, anything else on this? All right, Jennifer. Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chandler? Yes. Ms. Gennett? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right, and then Carolyn for Town Hall. Sure, it's it's actually been going fine. Um, we just have to remember to unlock the doors in the morning and lock them up at night. Um, but it's, it's uh, personally for me, it's really nice to be able to start meeting people out in the community. Um, I have been tucked away writing a grant, but um, I can hear the, the chatter out there. So that's been really nice, but I, I have not heard of any concerns from anybody. Um, and we still have Terry downstairs greeting people. Probably that will end in the next week or two, um, but it's going really well. It, I don't feel like anyone's been overwhelmed and people are respectful of space. So it's going well. I feel like the mailbox has helped a lot outside the back door and uh, turning people to some of the online payments. So hopefully some of that will continue just making mm -hmm. people's lives easier in town hall. Can they still use the box outside to make their payments? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Either way, they can come in or they can drop. Yes. Do we need a motion to let Town Hall open, or they're just doing it? And we're going to ignore them as a motion. I think you there, already. I think you already gave that the last meeting. The last we time did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're on our schedule. Okay. Working nine to four, eight to four. July 1st, 8.30 to four. 8.30 to four. All right. Um, anything else for COVID? Uh, David, I don't know if I was, I can do this now or town administrator report just to give you an update about um, the governor filing the bill to uh, extend the Zoom meetings for governor town meetings. 
now and your administrator report both. Okay, we'll come. I'll roll right into it. Okay, so um, the governor did file legislation because, as you know, June fifteen is when he rescinds the state of an emergency. Um, but there's been a lot of input from all of the municipalities. Um, how great it's been to be doing these Zoom um, uh, meetings. But by rescinding that state of emergency, technically it has to go back to how it was before. But there are so many positive things that have happened with it. Um, really civic engagement has been one of them. I, I don't, cause I wasn't here before COVID. I know in other communities, there's a lot more people participating at the meetings. So there's a lot of positive things that have happened from that. He did file a bill. We have not heard back or when they're going to vote on it just to try to extend that until September 1st. So I'm getting a sense of confidence speaking with other uh, legislators that they, that probably will happen. So as I schedule the, the next meeting, which is the 16th, uh, the, uh, the 12th is when the uh, state of emergency is rescinded, but hopefully we'll have an answer by then. Um, so I will certainly keep you updated as to where and how we're meeting on this on the 16th but right now I can't tell you for sure that we can remain um, doing zoom so can that's we can, can we make our own decision about doing zoom until the fall no it has to be no it has to re, it has to revert back to the open meeting law which is a general it's a mass general law yeah okay yeah. We already voted to probably have these until September anyway, as long as it passes. There was a bunch of other ones that came from Joe Comfort's office also that yeah. even affect. I don't know if it's, everybody's read them or not, but uh, along with that, uh, I did order. All right. Well, we'll just stay tuned for if we have to meet. I can get dressed in good clothes again and come. That's so good. <laughs> gonna make it a little harder when you're traveling though this yeah, I think it's been true. this has been a great way to keep a quorum all the time yeah so any other questions about that no I guess we would have to decide where we do want to meet that'll be the next thing so uh we want to meet in upstairs or we want to meet at the senior center or where do we want to meet so we'll have that discussion when we need to so as a heads up there's no room in this in the town hall <laughs> <laughs> Well, not even in the back the way they were, so we can have our meetings. This Good. I know that you have spoken about having the senior center hosting those meetings. Um, and I know right now technical reasons in space and spreading out. Um, that would be my recommendation is if you once you go back to in town, uh, I'm sorry, in person, uh, you might want to look at that as being a priority location. I would just also say that having been stuck once in the town hall elevator, the senior center is accessible. Yes, it is. All right, so I guess we'll see what the, the legislature does. Okay. Go from there. What else, what is the F? All right, well, I have been, um, I feel like I've been living in this room for the last three days, but um, I'm completing the Mass Works grant application. And if, if you remember, uh, we passed an article at town meeting to fund the sewer and water line replacement on Route 9 uh, with the intent of me submitting this grant. Um, it, looks, it looks good, and I've spoken to some people at the state. It looks good, but you just never know. But we are 100%. We could, we could uh, do a groundbreaking tomorrow and be able to start that project, which is really good when you're submitting a grant. But it was long. It was 39 pages. Um, and wow. so I know what I'm trying to get clarification is I know that um, you have given the town administrator authorization to submit grants and sign contracts, but it was a little, I think it would be, um, I, I just don't want to make any mistakes with this, this application. And one of the attachments it did ask for was a certification that I can, with the authority uh, that you've given me to be able to submit this grant. So um, I, I would feel better if you guys had an official vote, vote for me to submit this grant, 922,000. I, I will make that motion. Yes. All second. David, you're muted. All right. I think I heard Joyce there first and then a second by Amy. And so, okay. Any other discussion on allowing the town administrator to 
sign on behalf of the select board. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jennifer. Why we pay are the big bucks, right? That's right. Yeah. This is great. Roll we'll call vote, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Tungalo. Yes. Muscovitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes. I just wanted to say one thing to go back to 6.4. Did we only do the senior center and the library and not the fire substation? That's grand opening. That's not general opening. That's a big party. Oh, okay. Never mind. No. We're going to do that in just a minute. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Anything else on the administrator update, Carolyn? No, that's it. All right, cool. All right, now Amy's favorite subject, 6.4, grand opening of three new buildings. So I asked for this to be on the agenda because last year, before COVID even thought was thought about, we were planning that when the senior center was open, that we wanted to have a, an event that would invite people to come. We would invite the governor and other dignitaries because a new building in town is really a special event. So we got to sidetracked by that with COVID. And now we have three buildings ready to go that are online. And I think we should still have some kind of opening ceremony to make a big public statement about what Hadley has done and invite the governor out here as well as other dignitaries. And in order I, to I, I would like a ribbon cutting at each facility, uh, whether they all have to travel to each one, you'd have to travel to North Hadley, but I think it's important um, that we have put in the time and the effort on each building to make what it is um, for our town. And I think that instead of having them come out at three different openings, uh, whether you have to drive to North Hadley or not, it's not like you have to take another day. So I, I think it's important that we do that with, you know, a ceremony. Either we start at North Hadley and end up in, in the center of town for the senior center and the senior uh, library uh, and then go from there. But I think, you know, it's very important that we recognize each building for what it is and each one is special. Yes. So when, how about in the fall? How about a fall opening? Uh, we might be all maybe into more with less of COVID. Uh, and we may be able to, if we now at least plan for something like this, that um, I think the fall would be good after vacations are done and people will have an opportunity to uh, get back into the swing of things and have good community uh, output on that. I, uh, you know, that would be my thought. Uh, anybody else? All right, how about September 17th? Let's just go for a date. What does that fall on, Jane? Friday. Oh, you're cutting me close on my beach time, for God's no, no, sake. We're going to be in the daytime. All those dignitaries have to drive back to Boston. You'll be fine. <laughs> we'll do it nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, All right. If you want the governor to come, it might be beneficial if you offer him several dates and farther away is always better. That is straight from his office. I mean, I can do during the middle of the week also. We don't necessarily have to have it on a Friday. So I think, Maybe. you know, even sometimes for, for our dignitaries, they don't like Friday either because it cuts into their weekend and half of them don't work Fridays either. So, um, you know, they take off for their weekends. So what about something like a Tuesday or Wednesday in the middle of the week where they do all their functions of coming out? And unless you would think that would cut into different things. So I don't know. What, what do you think? I was kind of thinking, a, lot of, a lot more to press there too, probably. I was like kind of thinking October, like basically just offer him the whole month and let them pick, you know, if there is a day that he could come, I think it would be well worth it to get the governor to to come you know yeah october is good too it's a nice time for, to come out and see the foliage out in western massachusetts where some of them don't know where we are but we're out here we won't invite him that way <laughs> <laughs> just hope he's not when watching. was the last time our governor was out this way 
<laughs> well, he was in Springfield. I read about him a month ago. Well, Springfield, Springfield, but it's not like. Yeah, he was, he was here. Um, the lieutenant governor's been out a couple times. We actually yeah, it's, yes, yes, Karen it's Polito. Easier to get her. It's easier to get her here because she's a kind of a Western Massacre. If I, if I can just recommend that, remember that we have to set a date next the next time we meet for um, the special town meeting for your fall town meeting. So just keep that in mind with that October time frame. Man, that's what is that usually the uh, second? We've held them in November. You, you looking at October though for our town meeting? Well, ho hopefully it's inside. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll be back I would cafeteria. think it would be for sure. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll be back in a cafeteria by then. Well, you got to take into consideration in October is Columbus Day weekend. So we're not going to do it that weekend. We're not going to interfere with their long weekends. Um, would we do it that first Monday or Tuesday after Columbus Day? That have to be Tuesday because Monday is a holiday. Why don't we just send them uh, say, hey, if you there's a day you can come, let's pick a you know a Friday or even a Saturday or whatever, any day really. If he's we can come, we can work around his schedule. I think for something like this. Yeah, any day in Saturday uh, in October is good. That's no problem. And just can call their office, and usually they'll get tell me what days are not good. Like if they're in, if they're in a session, Fridays actually typically aren't great for legislators. Um, so. I can call the office and find out what's good. Usually somebody will. And I don't think they like coming on. I don't think they like coming on their weekends that cuts into their time off. So, you know, more or less they like looking at a, a day in the week, middle of the week or some we type of weekday. Plan their long weekend in Western Massachusetts, starting in Hadley with this celebration. There you go. <laughs> Wishful thinking, Jane. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> don't say it. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, let's throw it out. We want to do September. We want to do October. Yes. One of those. Okay. But let's give multiple dates. Right, okay. So, Carolyn, we have we need in two weeks to have set the town meeting date. Is that what you're saying? Into, yeah. The, the next meeting, I'll have some dates for you. Okay. Um. What, oh. what I think, honestly, what would regret, let me call the office and ask them what days of the week and in the fall, what is the best time? Because they may have some events already scheduled out here. And if we can piggyback on an event, it increases the chances of them coming. But do yes. point out to them that this is three events that we're systematically Absolutely. putting together for them so they don't have to come three times. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and please include Dan Carey. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Dan and Joe yeah. both said Friday at the uh, veterans thing that they would be happy to help uh, get the governor on board for this event. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Sounds okay. good. So, Carolyn, if you can just give us some dates next meeting, maybe yeah. what they're interested in doing, and we'll pick a date. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go down to... 9.1 FY22 boards and committee renewals. Um, if you are serving on a board or committee, please send an email or a letter to Jennifer, uh, to the select board through Jennifer, and let her know that you're still interested in serving. I know that every year she has to chase people down and see if they're interested in still serving or if the, there's a lot of people that are not even active on the boards they are on. So it's nice to, to get confirmation. And then, um, can we talk about uh, appointment, Jennifer, based on a calendar year? If we could make this appointment for like a 18 month period and so that way it carries over into, you know what I'm saying? I haven't had a chance to discuss this with Jessica. Okay. Um, and, and so I really do need to talk to her about it. Um, but if she's on board with it, I would really like y'all to switch to a calendar appointment schedule instead of a fiscal year appointment yeah. schedule. Um, and I will be sending out the emails um, to the chairs of the committees with what we have as their membership and who's up for renewal, which will help them jog their people's memories. I'll send that out tomorrow afternoon. Um, and then we just have to have it back by the 16th because that's the date. That's the last meeting you'll have this year. This fiscal year is the 16th. 
Um, we is it also possible at some point to post? Um, I don't know when that would come about. That positions would be open um, this coming fiscal year for different committees. Or are we just going to wait for people not to apply for those committees? Um, when people give me openings, um, I used to hand out a flyer at town meeting with all of the committee openings. And I had it on the website for a really long time. Um, COVID has really taken over our front page. Um, and hopefully as COVID goes away, I can start putting those kind of more community events and stuff back on there. But if people have openings on their committees, they just need to email us, email me, and I'll give it to one of y'all to announce at their meeting that they're seeking a member, but which is what y'all have done in the past. So one of the questions I have is if a committee is full, people can still ask to be on that committee. We don't necessarily need to keep the same people on there forever, right? We can make that appointment decision. Let's just say, I'll pick on my wife. The tree committee, for example, has three members and it's full, but if a new person put in for that. We, we could appoint that new person to the tree committee, right? Yeah. And unappoint somebody else? Well, they're, it's not unappointed if their term expires at the end of every year. That's how it works. So, so right? the culture council through the state, they're required not to stay on a committee for too long. But there's other committees that are volunteers that do some really heavy lifting for the town. And those people that have served on those committees for a really long time have not even just the historical knowledge, but the legal knowledge for the town that I would, I would hate for the town to lose people's um, knowledge base. I would hate for the town to lose a resource. I don't want to deprive someone new of joining something, but I just, that would be one, the one thing that comes straight to my mind is gosh, you know, I'd hate to lose someone who can who can quote the MGL for whatever committee or board they're on and know it backward and forwards that have and and so that would be the one thing I would suggest keeping in mind as you're looking at um, committee appointments. You know, and I and I think this is a good example for people to understand is that uh, Andy Morris Friedman did not reapply for his position on the CPA and unfortunately he did not get reappointed because there was no indication that he wanted to be reappointed and that, you know, so if, if you are on your last leg of your appointment, which is usually years and you're showing a interest in continuing your appointment to please submit a letter to us that you want to continue. All right, and so we'll make those appointments for, Jennifer, when do you need them by? Because our meeting's on the 16th, so you need them. I'm going to post it as an agenda item. I will put the attachment on probably that morning or in the afternoon, depending on how late I get them. But it will be there as an agenda item, and, and we're definitely giving lots of warning right now that that's what's coming up on there. Okay. But I'd like to give people because most everybody's a volunteer, I'd like to give them as much time as possible if y'all are okay with that. So I would say by the 14th, but if you send it to me on the morning of the 16th, I'm not gonna tell you we will not take your volunteer service. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. Yep, yep, okay. sounds good. Uh, all right, no executive session tonight on North Hadley Hall. Uh, no, I'm gonna leave. I'll, I'll just say on that, it's not sold yet. It, we, we've awarded the contract, but we have not been able to close on it. I had questions about that. People assumed it was sold. And then there was a backhoe parked in front of it for a couple of days. So people got nervous that we were knocking it down. <laughs> that, that wasn't a oh, town backhoe. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce. Uh, uh, Joyce hired him to knock the place down. I did. I <laughs> said, go for it, boys. <laughs> uh, any other um, announcements for this evening before we uh, adjourn? I do. I'm just gonna say, wait. I was just gonna say happy early birthday to David because his birthday is tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So happy, we should happy. say happy birthday to Amy Parsons then, whose birthday is right now at this very <laughs> moment. Oh, yeah. happy, happy birthday, happy birthday, Amy. Happy birthday. Thank you. And David I tomorrow. David. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your days. Have a good brew. Um, I just, ha I have a couple announcements. Can I go? Uh, Lynn, yeah. Do you have an announcement or did you have? 
I, I do, I have a, a announced, I wanted to let you know that the, our band closed today for $787,175. I had let you know about that. This is now what's going to be our annual smaller item, smaller as in not a major building uh, ban. And um, I'm not sure the public is aware that we got that at 0.35% interest rate, which wow. is pretty unbelievable. And uh, to remind the board, I sent you an email. To, we are actually selling a second band tomorrow, which is uh, to cover uh, a deficit in the library grant at this point, because the fifth payment is coming in in the next fiscal year. So we just need a, a short term. It's literally a, a four week ban to take us into the next fiscal year in which uh, at which point it gets paid off. So um, I don't expect as low an interest rate because I don't think having it for four weeks is as attractive, but that is a $575,000 ban and uh, we hope for a good rate on that. And I will be looking to all of you since they're not, there's not a meeting in the next week, I'll be um, <coughs> sending out something uh, and asking you to come in and, and sign the paperwork over the next few days once we have that information in. Okay. Sounds good, Linda. Right. Thank you so much for your hard work. We appreciate it. Thank you. Joyce, you had your announcement. Go ahead. Sorry. I do. Well, I'm lost. Okay, here I am. Hi. Um, I like to thank everybody that participated in our Memorial Day celebration. Uh, we had our fire department. We had, uh, as an honor guard, we had our police department that brought us through the streets of Hadley with their little blue lights flashing. We were able to get to all of our cemeteries as we needed to. And to everybody else that participated, um, it's always nice to do a, who's, who's talking? Uh, it was always nice to do, uh, as you know, Memorial Day is not for the, is, is for the people that did not come back from war. So we certainly do appreciate everybody, um, our condolences to all of their families that nobody came home from the war that they anticipated. I'm going to put a little plug out here for the American Legion. So the numbers are getting low. Our poor uh, legionnaires that um, go with us every year and participate in all these ceremonies, the numbers are lessening. Um, if anybody in town is a legionnaire or is a, is a veteran, um, they certainly are looking for recruitments to come and join them and make our legion what it was, a very vibrant place. Um, it's a great bunch of people to... Um, participate with and I enjoy it every year. I, I have done it since I was on school committee and now I am in my 32nd year of going to all the cemeteries and I think it's such an honor and I think that people that have been veterans I would like them to consider joining the Legion and making this a really good vibrant uh, bunch of men or women that uh, are veterans. So that's my plug for them. And I do have some condolences this evening. Um, I did not have any this past couple, couple of weeks ago that we had. We have um, Ed Balunas that passed away. Yeah, his son, um, Michael and uh, uh, David that were uh, our, our, his family and his wife. Um, certainly condolences to his family. We have Scott Rink ring that uh, passed away. So certainly condolences to his wife and his children. Uh, Father Benoit, who was of the Holy Redeemer Church, he was um, very much uh, loved in this community when he was our pastor. Um, we have Paul Tacey. Um, he wasn't here in Hadley, but he was our building, our alternate building inspector. Uh, so we have condolences to his family and people that knew him. Uh, also, David West, uh, this was Lisa West's uh, dad. He was from Williamsburg. So our condolences to the West family uh, on them. So heartfelt thoughts and condolences to all of their families. Yeah, Joyce, uh, the balloonuses, uh, Michael was on a fire department for another number of years. Yes. He was on our police force for a number of years also. Oh. Any other announcements? Jennifer? I have something that this is select board only. I need you all to come in tomorrow to sign everything. I have quite the stack for you. 
Um, if you're not available to come in and sign, you need to let me know. But I have some a, a commitment for uh, the collector's office that we have to have signed by Friday morning. Um, so I need everybody to come in. They'll all be at the table tagged. And it looks like some of you might not be in town. So if you can't sign, if you could just text me afterwards and let me know that, I would appreciate it. All right. I can be in tomorrow morning, Jennifer. What time? Um, where, where are these uh, things located? Upstairs? Uh, see, they're right over there on your table. Right there at the end. Right there at the end. Okay. Yeah, that's table. I'll see you. I'll be in tomorrow morning. I'll stop in at some point to do it. Thank yeah, you. I'll be in the morning. I'm probably right after Joyce. So. Okay. Y'all are both early birds, so excuse me if I'm not here. Well, I'm not working tomorrow, so I won't be an early bird, but I will be in tomorrow morning. Oh, wait, I can probably do it on my way to somewhere at like seven o'clock in the morning. Is that okay? You have a key. That's absolutely fine. Oh, right. I keep forgetting that I have a key. <laughs> I keep forgetting. All right. Any oh, last, call, last call for announcements? If I could get a, if there are none, if I could get a motion to adjourn. Motion oh, to adjourn. All right. Motion by Joyce. Second. Second by Amy. Jennifer. Uh, roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Pungalow? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. All right. Thank you. See you on the 16th.